Hello, Pestilence here with a travel related lock. And this is one that I've been waiting for a long time. There you go. And if I can get the key out. No. I guess I need to uh, lock it up first. Okay, there we go. It's a, however you pronounce it, junk dunk. Kind of tough to read it on the outside, but there it is all the way around. There's the back of it. It's a wafer lock. Here are the original keys. And I can blame Chris Capoon for this one because, quiet, because he had one on his channel and I just had to have it. I wanted it so bad. Um, this may be a different uh, version of that, but it does look like it's brass. It doesn't look like it's uh, steel, or at least it's uh, coated. Could be coated brass or coated steel, but not really sure. The key is. Uh, Kind of fidgety. I need to oil it up. And that's how it opens. This appears to be the original uh, chain and chain cover. And this uh, would have been used back in the uh, early days of motoring around the uh, Model A's and Model T's and those kind of cars. And if I had written some notes on this, I could tell you exactly. Uh, one moment, please. Okay, I took the time to get my magnifier and have a look at it. And it says on the lock, patent pending. So. All I can tell you is that it is from around the time for uh, Model A's and Model T's. Uh, it was a spare tire lock. There is also a website that's devoted to uh, antique uh, locks that were used in transportation. And it's listed on there as well with a picture. So that is it. Very nice lock. Um, I believe that... Uh, no. <laughs> Stop myself there. There's another lock that I'm going to get that's transportation, uh, transportation related. And um, it's been featured on uh, several channels too, but I'll get to that when I have it. Okay. Thanks for watching. Take care. Stay legal. Stay healthy. Bye. Hello, Pestilence here with an add-on. Yes, uh, I decided to uh, actually do some work and uh, I looked up uh, the history of this uh, lock and uh, of the company. I've done, ooh, I think I did one video on, um, on one of the uh, combination padlocks. Uh, that I was able to uh, decode. So anyway, uh, this will have some newer information. Okay, first of all, um, I'll say that uh, in Hungary, the surname uh, for what we were pronouncing as Junkunk, the surname was spelled J U N K U N C Z, and C Z in Hungarian uh, is pronounced like the S in its. So Junkuns, Junkuns. That's how uh, it would be pronounced, or typically is pronounced Junkuns. So 
Uh, we got that, and I'll look at my notes here. John Junkuns was born on February 2nd, 1879 in Hungary, which is why we were talking about Hungarian. And at the age of 15, he came to the U.S. as a stowaway. Uh, apparently, they didn't have uh, the boat locked up. So, okay. Uh, let's see. On February 1st, 1910... John Junkuns received a patent on his combination padlock, which was considered to be the forerunner of the modern combination padlock. Uh, the patent was filed on May 25th, 1909, and he was 30 years old when he uh, received that patent. Uh, uh, this was information that I received from his... Uh, that was written uh, by Gil Junkuns, who was the grandnephew of John Junkuns and grandson of Stephen Junkuns, who was um, the brother of John. Or Stefan. I guess you could pronounce it Stefan. Okay. Uh, it's late here, and so uh, well, I'll take that into consideration. Okay. Now this lock, uh, I what I could find was a patent on a ball-shaped lock, but it only had one shackle. It didn't show the second one. And I've I've seen other uh, junk guns that were uh, spare tire locks that used the ball shape but with a metal strap and I think uh, another one had like a metal tube that went around the tire or the wheel. So it may be that uh, that they all have that in common and that the, the patent is for this part and then uh, whatever went around it maybe it was patented later. Okay, anyway, a ball-shaped lock um, patent for a ball-shaped lock was filed on December 17th, 1925, and was granted on July 30th, 1929. And then there were other patents that were filled uh, through the 20s and granted through August 24th, 1937, which was for a combination padlock. So um, they were either for improvements or maybe a difference in mechanics. So, um, because the first one that he filed for was for a, uh, a combination padlock. And uh, it said that he had problems uh, keeping track of his keys for his locks that he had locking up his tools and things. He was um, doing some, it wasn't tool and die, but it was, uh, Something, I think, with the train industry, uh, doing mechanical work or something. So, okay. Now, John Junkuns with Casper Weifenbach founded the Junkuns Safe and Lock Company Limited, uh, August 25th, 1909. And uh, they had the McKay Novelty Works producing their first locks. Uh, apparently, neither of them was a very good businessman. And so, uh, what ended up happening was that association ended less than a year later, page two, when John Junkins moved to Chicago, where a more established firm produced his locks. In 1912, John was joined by his brother Stefan in establishing Junkun. Junkuns Brothers Manufacturers, which produced locks. Uh, the, the brothers parted in 1918 with John continuing in the lock business and Stefan establishing his own tool and die operations called General Machinery and Manufacturing Company. Now, those two businesses uh, remained within the family until uh, when this was written, which was... Uh, the late 90s. 
And then uh, John, uh, John Junkins purchased the assets and name of American Lock Company. I don't have a date down for that, but he established. That's when he established the Junk Un Brothers, Junk Uns Brothers, American Lock Company, and he would have. Uh, uh, if you've ever seen some of the Junk Uns Brothers locks, it has on their successor to uh, American Lock Company. Okay, on September first, nineteen ninety-eight, the surviving Junk Uns heirs sold their interest in the Junk Guns Brothers American Lock Company to Goldner, Hahn, Johnson, and Morrison, a Minneapolis acquisition firm, which probably chopped it up and sold it off. And so, that ends this portion, whoops, sorry about that, ends this portion of the history of the Junk Guns Brothers Lock Company. And once again, here is my my latest lock. Okay, get in there. And there is a, a small screw in there, uh, which I believe it was. Um, yes, I'm most certainly assured of that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it was on. Um, another uh, channel, and I apologize most profusely for not remembering uh, Chris Capoon. There we go. Uh, and that was without caffeine. Uh, Chris Capoon, who has one of these locks, showed that there was a small screw in there that when you removed it, um, this other shackle would come out so that you could place it onto a, a link. Otherwise, um, you know, if you've seen these locks, just the lock part with uh, with no chain link over here, then, you know, you wouldn't be able to use it. Okay, so, there we go. And uh, I can put my brain to bed and hopefully be better tomorrow. So, thanks for watching. Take care. Stay legal. Stay healthy. Uh, we've been ordered by the governor here in Michigan to stay indoors until the end of this month uh, when hopefully uh, things will have improved but uh, no traveling around except for uh, to go to a doctor's or you know unless it's for medical reasons or to buy groceries or essentials that sort of thing so i hope things are going well in your part of the country or world bye